last discussion, we saw how to solve unconstrained optimization problems. We saw that in certain nice cases, we could get the stationary points directly using the first order optimality technique. Whereas in other cases, gradient descent and its cousins could be used. However, these techniques can fail if we have constraints in the optimization problem. Even if we introduce simple interval constraints, the optima may change. The new optima may not be a stationary point, so the first order optimality technique will fail and gradient descent steps might violate the constraint, so that would fail too. Today, we will find out how to deal with constraint optimization problems. My dear friends, this is CS771 Introduction to Machine Learning and let's get started. To recapitulate a bit, a constraint optimization problem has an objective function and one or more constraints. Points that satisfy every single one of those constraints are said to be in the feasible set. The first technique that we will study for handling constraints is the projected gradient descent method. The idea behind this technique is to simply undo any constraint violations done by gradient descent steps by using what is called a projection step. Given a point x and a set C, the projection of x onto C is defined as the point closest to the point x that is also in the set C. If the point x is already in the set C, then the projection is defined to be the point x itself. The projected gradient descent algorithm is identical to the gradient descent algorithm except that it projects back onto the feasible set after every gradient step. Notice that the projection step moves as little as possible so as to not mess up the progress made by the descent step. This projection trick can be used alongside other gradient descent variants such as SGD, coordinate descent and others. However, Note that this technique may become difficult to use if the projection step itself takes too much time. Thankfully, for certain simple sets, the projection step is available in closed form. Here are a few examples. In the first example, the set is the unit ball centered at the origin. Whereas in the second example, the set is the positive orthant, the set of all vectors whose all coordinates are non-negative. Recall that if the point being projected is already inside the set, then the projection is the point itself. The third and the fourth examples presented here generalize the previous two examples to a general ball and a general box respectively. Interval constraints of this kind are often called box constraints since the resulting feasible set looks like a box. To handle cases where the constraint set is so complicated that the projection step itself would be tricky and expensive, there are other methods available that try to get rid of the constraints altogether. One such popular method is the barrier method that prevents constraint violation by creating so-called barrier functions. Consider this cartoon optimization problem with the objective function f and a single constraint gx less than equal to zero that results in the feasible set shaded in magenta color. The idea here is to create a function, let's say r, which takes the value 0 inside the feasible set and infinity outside the feasible set. Once we have such a barrier function, we can go ahead and eliminate the constraint and optimize f plus r as an unconstrained optimization problem instead. The first order optimality technique or a gradient descent variant can be used to solve this problem. It is easy to see that optimizing f plus r will yield the exact same answer as the original constraint optimization problem. Let us now see how to create such barrier functions. The simplest and most popular barrier functions are the inverse barrier and the logarithmic barrier functions. These are approximate barrier functions since they don't exactly take the value 0 inside the feasible set. However, they have many nice properties. They are differentiable if the constraint function was differentiable, which is a nice thing since it allows us to continue using GD variants to solve the problem after the barrier has been entered into the objective. However, these barrier functions may also distort the objective since they take a non-zero value inside the feasible set. Moreover, handling equality constraints is tricky when using these barrier functions. One thing to keep in mind while using these barrier functions is that these barrier functions shoot up to positive infinity at the boundary of the feasible set. 
us, they will work only if our problem is a minimization problem. If our problem is a maximization problem, we must first convert it into a minimization problem by negating the objective. Let us take a simple example to understand this better. Here is a simple example to understand the use of barrier functions. We wish to find a d-dimensional vector x inside the unit ball such that the dot product of x and the all ones vector is the largest. The solution to this optimization problem is actually the vector with all coordinates equal to 1 by square root d, where d is the dimensionality of the vectors. Let us see if the barrier method can find this solution. There is only one constraint in this problem, so let us create a logarithmic barrier for this constraint. This barrier shoots up to infinity as the Euclidean norm of x approaches 1, thus preventing the constraint from being violated. We can now include this barrier function into the objective to create the augmented objective and eliminate the constraint. However, we realize at this point that we have made a mistake. The original problem is a maximization problem and our barrier function shoots up to infinity at every unit norm vector x. Thus, this new optimization problem will have infinitely many solutions, each of which gives an infinite objective value. This is clearly wrong. To correct this error, before using these barrier functions, we must have first ensured that our optimization problem is a minimization problem. Once we have done this little bit of cleanup, we find that simply applying the first order optimality principle gives us the solution in closed form. Note that the solution respects the constraint which means that the barrier did its job properly. However, the solution is not quite the correct one although it does approach the correct solution for large values of d. This is due to the distortion to the objective introduced by the barrier function. However, not to worry, it is possible to control this distortion by introducing a regularization constant lambda that we multiply to the barrier function. Note that this constant is specified by us and not learnt or optimized. We see that after solving this modified problem, the solution does approach the correct solution as lambda tends to zero. This is understandable since lambda is controlling the strength of the barrier function and hence limits its distortion. Just look at these plots to appreciate how small values of lambda make the barrier function almost a perfect one. However, note that we cannot just set lambda to zero since that will completely eliminate the barrier altogether and our solution may then violate the constraint. Instead, we must set lambda to a small positive value to keep the barrier but limit its distortion. To get more practice on using barrier functions, you should try to solve these exercise problems. First, create barrier functions for these inequality constraints and then use them to solve this constraint optimization problem with an interval constraint. Find out the effect of using regularization and setting the regularization constant to small or large values. In today's discussion, we explored two ways of handling constraints in optimization problems. The first way involved projections. The method is versatile, can be used with all gradient descent variants and works very well if the constraint set is simple, but it can also get tricky to use if the constraint set is such that projecting onto it becomes difficult. The second way involved the use of barrier functions that hide the constraints inside the objective itself yielding an unconstrained problem to which first order optimality or gradient descent methods can be applied. However, barrier methods cannot handle equality constraints very easily and may also distort the objective, although careful use of regularization constants may address this to some extent. In our next discussion, we will discuss a very powerful method that uses exact barrier functions. Till then, have fun and I will see you next time.